How are we doing, everybody? This is That Our Nerd, back at you with another very nice uh, video. Uh, what we're going to cover today is how to do SQL joins within R, and we're going to do this using the dplyr package. Um, the one I'm going to load here is tidyverse. Tidyverse. Um, and this package actually comes with dplyr and ggplot and a lot of other really good packages, so I just use this one a lot. So tidyverse. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple data frames and I'm going to use a little bit of randomness. So I'm going to set a seed so that you guys can follow along and make this data frame as well. So set a seed 2018 and we'll do a data frame one. And inside of this data frame, we're going to do a uh, data dot frame and we're going to do a customer ID. And we're going to make this a vector from one to 10. Right, so if we run this chunk, it's just going to be 1 through 10. So our customer ID is our 1 through 10. Um, and then we're also going to put a product. And for this one, we're going to use our little bit of randomness here. We're going to do a sample. And so what this is, is this, this first vector here that we make. It's kind of like the urn. It's like what's inside of, of uh, what we're going to try to take a sample of. <laughs> An urn. Classic, right? Um, and 10 and replace is equal to true. So what this is doing, this is saying we have a, an urn with a toaster, a TV, a dishwasher. We're going to take 10 pulls out of this and we're going to replace it. So once we pull it out, we put it back in. And so if we run just this chunk here, we see it pulled 10, 10 random draws out of that. Okay, now we'll make our second data frame. And for this one, we'll do a data.frame. Uh, we'll do a customer ID is equal to, and for this one, we're actually gonna do a sample here as well. So DF1 dollar customer ID. And we're gonna do five draws from this urn. And so what this is saying is we're gonna take a sample of uh, the possible options from this data frame one that we just made out of these customer IDs. So we have an urn that goes from one to 10. And we're gonna pull five out of there. And we don't wanna put replaces equal to true because we just want one. And if when it's gone, it's gone. <clears throat> okay. And then we'll put what state they're from. So we'll do another sample here. Sample, no, sample. Okay, and then uh, in this one, this little urn we have here, we'll do New York and California. We're going to do five pulls, right? Because we have five here, so we want it to be the same for our data frame. And we're going to replace is equal to true on this one. Let's put this one down on the next line there. And then all of this we're going to wrap in a tibble, which is something that dplyr uses. It's pretty much just a data frame, but it has a lot of nice properties and uh, it's better. So tbldf, and we'll wrap this whole thing in the tibble. TBLDF, wrap this whole thing in the tibble. All right, and then we'll run this whole thing, the seed all the way down. Uh, shoot, darn it. I done fudged up. Oh, I didn't close this one here. <clears throat> let's run this one one more time. Now well, let's run the whole thing with the seed. Okay, so we have DF1, we have customer ID 1 through 10, and then TV, TV, toaster, toaster, TV, toaster, TV, toaster, dishwasher, TV, and then data frame 2, which is a bunch of customer IDs, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, huh. what are the odds of that? Uh, state, California, New York, California, California, California. Okay, so let's do some joins here. So in all these joins, we're going to use DF1 as our left table and df2 as our right table first join we'll do is an inner join and what this one does is it returns only what is in both data frames and this is by whatever key we give it so we'll say df1 we're going to pipe it so that's the percent greater than percent is a pipe 
we're going to pipe this data frame into the inner join inner join function and we're going to give it the data frame too and then you're supposed to tell it what you're what you want to merge it by because there could be multiple columns that are the same and you might just want to merge it by the the one so we'll say by is equal to customer id so when we join there we we only keep the customer ids that are in both of our data frames which is four five six seven eight and then we get the product from the left and the state from the right Okay, we do a left join. The left join returns everything in the left and the rows with matching keys in the right. Okay, so this is really honestly pretty similar here. We're gonna take data frame one, we're gonna pipe it into a left join, and we'll give it data frame two. We'll say buy is equal to customer ID again. And so now we keep everything from the left, right? Customer ID, we have one through 10 on the left. We keep all the products on the left. And then from state, we pull over what was in the, the right data frame and match it up, right? So we had four, five, six, seven, and eight in our right data frame. And then it gives it the, the states in there. Okay, right join returns everything in the right rows with matching keys in the left again really similar here this is what's really nice about dplyr you know it's super pretty pretty similar uh, simple so we're gonna take data frame one we're gonna pipe it into our right join data frame two by is equal to customer customer ID so now we're gonna keep the customer IDs that were in our right table our states that were in our right table, and then we're gonna match up with our key, the products that were from our left table. Okay, outer join. This one is gonna return all rows from both tables and join matching keys in the right and the left. So as you can probably guess what this is, <laughs> actually this one's just a hair different. We're gonna take data frame one, and instead of an outer join, which is like the SQL terminology, we're gonna do a full join. DF2 by is equal to customer ID. Now this one looks like the left join. Um, it's actually the exact same output, but if we had a 11, like a customer ID 11 in our right table that wasn't in our left, it would be down there, and then we'd be missing this one, right, because we don't have it in our left table, and then we have whatever state it was in the right table. That is if we had customer 11 and their state in the right table. That's what, what it would show there. But in this case, we didn't have anything extra in that uh, right table, so it doesn't show anything extra. <clears throat> Finally, the last one, which I actually kind of like a lot, is the anti-join. I actually find all sorts of weird <laughs> reasons to use this. Uh, so anyways, returns all rows in the left that do not have matching keys in the right. So it's gonna look at our first table and it's gonna say, what of these are not in the right? And then it's gonna return that. So we'll say DF1, we're gonna pipe it to an anti-join. DF2, by is equal to customer ID. All right, so we had four, five, six, seven, eight in the customer ID for the other one and not not in the left table, or not in the right table, I should say. And so it returns what was not in the right table. So pretty cool. Uh, anyways, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, make sure to press that uh, like button uh, so other people can see it. And make sure to subscribe for the best R content that is available. <laughs> yeah, you have a great day. Thanks for your time.